Angela Kaz, Man Daddy, have you have you actually heard of the Von Erich curse? Um, no, 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 no. That no. sounds more serious no. than. Mm-mm. Yeah, it sounds a little more deep than no. uh, him We're, just like. How do we go from your... Hulk Hogan to that? Yes, obviously I have. Of I course. would imagine if your finishing move is the curse of a the family, family curse, of the family curse, generations. As a bit of a disclaimer, I just wanted everyone to know this next story deals with the death of a very small child and multiple suicides. And if you ever need help, please reach out to 1-800-273-8255, 1-800-273-TALK. For the sake of the story, uh, in wrestling, there is a kayfabe universe, and that's where the wrestlers have you believe this one thing is going on what's the origin of that word i don't know it's just it's a uh, it's kind of like carney slogan how would it's you like know it if you slang. saw it spelled out what is yeah, it how do you, when you look this? at it because I, I saw that just K-fabe? the other day and i'm like huh it's k-a-y-f-a-b-e so it's k-fabe, k-fabe. Okay. So, like, okay. as you would just like see that would so you be like, my k-fabe uh yeah so man daddy is my k-fabe manager and then okay. in ring he accidentally strikes me with a steel chair to the head. It was not accident. I lose the championship belt. Then he double crosses me, runs off with the winner, and I'm totally could see me doing that. I'm brokenhearted in the ring, and then I turn from heel to face. So now the crowd is like, "We want you to have revenge." That's all kayfabe. None of that actually happened. Okay, Real so I get it. For the sake of the story, I'm just going to refer to everyone in these in these events by the their wrestling name. So okay. out of respect, yes. The Von Erich curse um, is something that happens to the Von Erich family from 1959 to 1993. Ooh. It spans five decades. Fritz Von Erich is the patriarch of the v- Von Erich wrestling dynasty. He was born in 1929 in Texas, and early on, he was uh, initially trained by Stu Hart, father of the best fucking wrestler in the history of the world, Bret Hitman Hart. Best there You're was, a bit of a fan. You're best a bit there of a is, fan. and best there ever will be, and that will never, Man Daddy, be up for debate. I, ever. I, I, I see a little bit of passion here, a little bit of passion on this. Uh, go for it. I'm just saying, Stu Hart rules. The entire Hart family rules. Mm, Hart but Stu. Fritz married his uh, high school sweetheart Doris in 1950, oh. and he became a star in uh, WCCW, which was a pre- precursor to WCW, which stood for World Class Championship Wrestling. And he was also a star in National Wrestling Alliance, or NWA. Oh. Hey, those guys had range. Yeah. And I think you're a fan of their music, right? And they're wrestling now. <laughs> <laughs> Easy E would drop the elbow drop on your ass. Oh, yeah. fucking, <laughs> fuck the police. Fritz and Doris would, together, uh, procreate a total of six males. So any uh, single mothers out there, single fathers, think six boys. Mm. Just, just think for a minute. Destroying six, everything you own. Six boys. Just, just eating everything. Stinky eating yep. yes, everything. Weird stinky. little boners all over the place. <laughs> yeah, just, Everyone's got a 13 weird little stinky boners <laughs> in your living room. <laughs> You're always wondering if that's... Like a nightmare world. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. What is that fluid? Yep. I don't know. <laughs> so, Ugh, uh, and a lot all, of bleach. And all of, bleach. of them wrestling. So, um, a few, up, going crazy. A few years after their marriage, the inevitable Von Erich wrestling empire was created with the birth of Little Jack Jr. The second son, Kevin, was born a few years later in 1957. David in 58, Carrie in 1960, Mike in 64, and Chris, the youngest, born in 1969. So you have in chronological order Jack, Kevin, David, Carrie, Mike, and Chris. The Von Erich surname is famous for their wrestling empire and uh, vast influence across the state of Texas as far as uh, sportsmanship, athletics. Fritz, after all, when he g- kind of got out of wrestling, he was the president of numerous wrestling organizations. Obviously, he wrestled himself. He His finishing move was the Iron Claw. Oh. He was like six seven and he would just grab someone's face nice. and then in in his like tape basically he would have this like small razor and and would cut them no so as he oh, yeah. moved down their face it looked like he was just bleeding them from the top uh. down oh, yeah, they always had razor blades hidden all over the place because he cut your forehead it's just such a thin uh, area just it bleeds a lot oh, yeah. Yeah. but it's really nothing but unfortunately the most 
resilient and enduring memory of the Von Erics isn't their in-ring prowess. It's a curse that followed the family over that course of five decades, 50 years. So while Jack, the youngest, born in 52, was outside playing in the family's backyard, he came into contact with a wire pressing against an electric fence. Ooh. And the powerful shock was so bad it knocked him to the ground completely unconscious, and he drowned in a small puddle. Damn. Oh. Jesus Christ. This was in the year 1959 and was only a few months before the child's seventh birthday. Oh, wow. So this was young Jack Jr., and then as the decades passed, uh, Fritz Von Erich was a very well-respected wrestling man, and now he's got these kids coming out. Um, Kevin uh, Von Erich said, by the time I was 10, look, I knew how to wrestle. He's like, you could have put me up against any grown man, and I would have been able to sell and also deliver, like, kayfabe moves. Like, this kid's badass. So, as the years went on, uh, the Von Erichs, Kevin, David, Kerry, Mike, and Chris all began working out to follow in their father's footsteps. They all wanted to get into the ring. They all wanted to do like shoot promos where you're like, I'll tell you one thing right now, Chester Charleston. You might think you're the hey, what's up guy, but you're going to be the hey, what's down guy. When I, you know, like just the, like the cheesy <laughs> promos. That was and mesmerizing. They, they trained. They trained their asses off. They were eager to be a better wrestler than their father, who had high hopes and dreams for his sons. And at the same time, friends and relatives would say Fritz was very militaristic. He was he was almost like boot camp, um, training his little kids to lift weights and get into like tip top shape. So work on the one liners. Yeah, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking of get like shops together. Who was it? Um, Michael Jackson's dad, Joe, Joe Jackson. Jackson. Joe Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> like almost like that. Like you know, sing better. One, two, three. Just constantly doing... It was just, like he was in the room with us right yeah. there, wasn't it? It's was scary. He's like summoned him. I can only imagine the shit Michael went through. Oh, it's nightmare The entire world. family. Oh, yeah. Just look at Jermaine's face. Uh, you could... There's, just look at Jermaine Jackson's face. You see... That guy sees some shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, David, who was the... One, two, three. David, who was the third child born, he was a star. He was obviously becoming the star. He was known as the Yellow Rose of Texas. He was a phenomenal wrestler. Yep, he wore he wore yellow. Um, he was great on the mic. He could do something better than I just did, which was awful. <laughs> I thought it was good. But he would also put over any opponent in a way that made him look like putty. So what does that mean, put over? Make them look really good. Make the other guy like... There you go. The guy just slowly work. walks up to you and just like... Double fists, hammer style, right onto the top of your forehead. You like act like you're super hurt. You're not going to win the match, you know. And so this guy can just kind of walk around and catch his breath. He he was really really good. And like not only could could he give it, he could also sell it. Um, and he was being groomed actually to take the championship title away from Ric Flair. Oh, wow! The nature, the nature Boy. Yep. Rick Flair's line is to be the man, you, you got to beat, beat the man. man. So, and that guy had the weirdest man titties. Rick and he Flair was man old titties, in like man. the sixties yeah. or whatever, the seventies. Yeah, he was 70s, like old, or and that was his thing. He was like a cool old dude in like yeah, the seventies, exactly. and he's still that. It's amazing. Well, then amazing. Yeah, he got into a plane crash. Yeah, there's a there's well. A, there's he, a whole story. he maintained his whole like yeah. persona, but he was still old titties guy. Rick. Rick Flair at the same time. So if a title changes hands, Rick Flair was going to sell how David Von Erich was going to take the championship title. But before that would happen, David decided he would travel to Japan to compete in additional campaigns, you know, uh, uh, promotions. And before he left, Kevin Von Erich said, hey, look, I know you don't look good and I know you've been dabbling. So this was 84. The 80s were a time where he would say, if cocaine was there, you would do it. Booger sugar. It's stupid now, but you would do it. He goes, hey, look. Why is that stupid now? <laughs> well, because of what I'm about to say. Oh, shit. Because it's sad. But he goes, listen, you don't look good. Just promise me you're not going to die in Japan. Uh... And Kevin Von Erich said, I thought if I said it out in the open, it would be something that he would take to heart. He suddenly died after a match in Japan in 1984. 
due to acute enteritis. So that's uh, inflammation of the small intestine. But other wrestlers and also Kevin Von Erich have alluded to the assumption he actually passed away from a drug overdose. Mm. No. That was 1984. Mike Von Erich. So he is the fifth born behind Chris as the youngest. So he is a uh, number five of six. Mike Von Erich was always a very small build. He looked just like David, though. Therefore, he strained to prove himself, not just in the eyes of his father, Fritz, but also to the fans. You know, he wanted the fans to also root for him, too. While wrestling in, in Israel in 1985, he was just trying to bulk up, you know, and just get stronger, like wrestling with different people. He injured his shoulder, and that forced him to have surgery. A fever developed a couple days afterwards, and doctors found he was suffering from toxic shock syndrome. Oh, what? what? Which is a rarity yeah. in men, uh, but it is a possibility in women when um, personal hygiene products yes. are not properly cared for. Wow. Brain. Def- definitely said. Definitely say. said. Thank that you. Was I was going to say how you step subject into it. dealt with just... perfectly. Well done. Brain damage ensued, and he lost a lot of weight, so he was basically wasting away and the next year he lost control of his vehicle from the uh, complications suffered additional head injuries and then his arrest with a DUI in 1987 was the the last straw he ended up committing suicide by overdosing on alcohol and Placidil which was a sleep aid he was the third Von Erich to pass after Jack and David and was only 23 years old oh that's so sad Chris Von Erich, the youngest, always suffered from really terrible asthma attacks. He just didn't have a... He wasn't born of a strong constitution, as they say. But he might have truly have loved the sport of wrestling more than any of his other brothers. He suffered from brittle bones, though. So, just... He would often crush them while doing simple maneuvers like rolls. Like, on the mat, he would break ribs. Or drop kicks. He would break... His, uh, uh-huh. the, uh, I think, fibula? Fibia. 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 He would, he would break all that shit. <laughs> oh. He's basically Mr. Glass from yep. Unbreakable. So he, uh, he started abusing drugs like his other brothers who had passed before him. Frustrated at not being able to truly make a name for himself. And again, he was born in 1969. Hey. He, uh, was also devastated by his older brother, Mike's suicide. He killed himself with a gunshot to the head in 1991 just over two weeks away from his 22nd birthday Jeez. he was wow. 21 years old Carrie Von Eric. wait 93 91. 1991 oh 91 Carrie Von Eric, on the other hand was the total package he was dubbed the modern day warrior he was the Texas tornado he had a massive build like think like 90s wrestling you can see every muscle and yet they're big, like think like steroids big. Yeah. Way bigger than any of his fucking brothers. Way bigger than anyone probably should be. He looked <laughs> he actually looked similar in physique to the Ultimate Warrior. So uh. anyone out there listening, the Ultimate Warrior was this jacked beast who know who knew two wrestling moves <laughs> and yet he beat Hulk Hogan. Like that's another He had those arm tassels. Yep. Yeah, he had like the tassels the and the makeup, makeup dude. Yep. It was all about the, the makeup, makeup and the tassels. And the tassels. Yeah, He'd come do down from the anything. ceiling and shit. He had a massive build. He could also work angles. He was also technically skilled. He prided himself on being a tactician in the ring. He also was the only one who wrestled for Vince McMahon's World Wrestling Entertainment. And he won the Intercontinental Championship in 1990 when he defeated Mr. Perfect and he held it for three months. He was a rising stock in WCCW for sure before that. But he was also wild and took way too many chances with little to no real payoffs. He was in a horrific motorcycle accident. He almost died in 1986 that resulted in the amputation of his right foot. Damn. Oh, no. Awful. Like, this guy in the peak performance of his life, his right leg, I guess he slid on it. Oh. It was so bad that oh. they Rubbed had to... it to a nub. They had to oh. do pretty much at the Dude. time like reconstructive surgery. Jesus Christ. He was so... Probably jonesing from not, you know, like doing his daily, you know, like yeah. get you through the day kind of routines. He wanted to get up and exercise, and that's when it actually worsened it to the point where the doctors had to amputate. Oh. So he might have had a chance, no way. but it still could have been, you know. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. 
Consequently, he never took his boots off when backstage, even showering in them, so as not to have to mention it to other wrestlers. Mm-hmm. So, like, he was wearing this uh, prosthetic foot, wow. but he was still, oh, like, okay. doing all of his wrestling moves. He was in a bad way now. Uh, a string of run-ins with the law, exacerbated by drug addictions, diminished his full potential then further. He was... God, he... When you see someone in that kind of discipline and you see every fiber of their muscle and then you see them just a year later and they're still in great physique, but you can tell something is happening. That's what happened to him. He broke probation and might have been facing serious jail time after multiple arrests. His marriage had completely dissolved. At the age of 33, Kerry committed suicide with a single shot to his heart with a 44 caliber handgun. Boom! Oh, wow. Jeez, that is a big hit. Bret Hart later recounted in his book, Hitman, My Real Life in the Cartoon World of Wrestling, a conversation several months before that in which Kerry told him one-on-one he was going to kill himself, his marriage was deteriorating, and that he thought he could hear his brothers calling out to him from beyond the ether. Wow. What the fuck? Jeez. Like the ending of Star Wars movies when they're just, they're all kind of blue to the side. Like, come on, buddy, come on. Carrie was 33 years old, and Bret Hart remembered just saying, I didn't know what to do. Like, this was someone being so honest with me, and I've been Stu Hart, Bret Hart's dad, trained Fritz von Erich. His fucking dad trained his father, you know, Carrie's dad. And Carrie is telling them this, and he was like, I don't think that's the right thing to do. What Many can you do? Words yeah, is, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's tough. The only remaining brother was Kevin, the second born. Feeling despondent, so five out of six brothers died. Feeling despondent, he recounted on ESPN's 30 for 30 short films that he just wanted to go away and be arrested. He wanted to go to jail. Oh. So he walked into a Lubbock, Texas gun store, stuffing a 22 long rifle into his pants. He was going to walk out of the shop obviously stealing from the old (laughs) storekeeper. He said he looked at me, not thinking he would be noticed when the guy didn't say anything. He was shocked when the old man called out, we love you, Kev. Uh, Oh, Wow. This was in Lubbock, Texas, way far away from the Houston suburb. He broke down, removed the gun, and hugged him. He says it's no one's fault what happened with his family and that he thanks his father for what he did for the family because of all of, all of the great memories that they had. Now living in Hawaii, Kevin finds peace with the rising sun each morning and focuses on nature, healing, and keeping the family memory alive by inducting the posthumous members of the Von Erich family into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2009. Though at a terrible cost, the entire family, Kevin, David, Carrie, Chris, Mike, and Patriarch Fritz are now forever immortal in the annals of wrestling's greatest superstars. Wow. Wow. So why were they cursed? What? What? Because, maybe be, because of errantly thrown around curses. You know what? We don't need to be doing any curse shit. That's fucked up. No, no, no curses.